When we take a peek at our solar system, we find more than 290 intriguing moons orbiting various celestial bodies. Most of them are circling the gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. Our good old Earth contributes just one to this celestial dance, our beloved moon. But here's a thought. Is this big, bright, gray companion really the only natural object in our orbit? You see, back in the 19th century, some astronomers made some pretty interesting claims about discovering a new moon around Earth. Take the French astronomer Frédéric Pti, for instance. In 1846, he announced he'd spotted a second moon, but his peers weren't entirely convinced. He said it was just 11.4 kilometers away from Earth, which is about as high as commercial airplanes fly. Then there was the German scientist Dr. George Volu in 1898, who said he not only found a second moon, but a whole system of tiny moons orbiting Earth. However, his discovery couldn't be confirmed and was widely considered a bit of a fable. Even the guy who discovered Pluto, Clyde Tombaugh, took a shot at finding a second moon in 1959, but he came up empty-handed. So based on these earlier attempts, it seemed like Earth only had one moon. Or did it? Because, you see, there's a more intriguing possibility. It suggests that over the years, Earth might have had moon-like objects, and there might even be more of them now than you'd imagine. Stick around, because we'll delve into this fascinating space topic. And don't forget to subscribe to Cosmic Discovery to stay updated on all the cosmic mysteries we uncover. Now, let's rewind to about 4.5 billion years ago when Earth was just getting started. As far as we know, it didn't have any moons. But that all changed when, according to the giant impact hypothesis, a protoplanet about the size of Mars, nicknamed Thea, collided with young Earth. This collision sent debris flying into space, and over time, it came together to form the magnificent moon we know today. But some astronomers think there might have been another moon way back, when. An impact with this hypothetical second moon could explain why one side of our moon is flat and marked with volcanoes, while the other side is mountainous with deep craters. Although, it's worth noting there are other explanations too. So it seems our moon is our one and only permanent natural satellite. But hold on, because even though past attempts to find a second moon might have been a bit off track, there have been some other intriguing discoveries in Earth's orbit. In 1991, for example, a small object was spotted that seemed like it could be a piece of old NASA hardware from the Apollo missions. But after a closer look, it turned out to be something of natural origin. This mysterious object, dubbed 1991 VG at the time, was no twin of our familiar moon. It was actually reported to be just about 10 meters in diameter. But here's the kicker. It was the first of its kind observed to be gravitationally bound to Earth, at least for a little while. It turned out that 1991 VG was more of a temporary moon, as it only stuck around for a few months. It joined the ranks of just a handful of temporary satellites ever spotted. So could it be that Frederick Pti and Dr. George Volu were onto something after all? Maybe they stumbled upon temporary moons, these brief companions to our planet. It's a fascinating possibility. And speaking of which, one of the earliest mentions of a temporary moon goes all the way back to 1913. That's when a peculiar and still unexplained meteor shower lit up the skies from Canada to Brazil. Some astronomers think it could have been a short-lived natural satellite of Earth, a temporary second moon that eventually met its end in our atmosphere. These temporary moons are usually small objects that get caught in Earth's gravitational pull, making them natural satellites. But unlike our trusty moon, they'll eventually either drift away or collide with Earth. Quite the celestial dance, wouldn't you say, while temporary mini-moons are not the sole objects in orbit around our planet, there's an intriguing history of celestial phenomena accompanying our Earth. In 1961, a report unveiled the presence of what we call ghost moons, also known as Kordelinsky clouds. These ghost moons were described as elusive dust clouds, too faint to be seen with the naked eye, and they shared Earth's orbital path with the moon for nearly six decades. For a long time, the existence of these ghost moons 
remained a subject of debate. It wasn't until 2018 that concrete evidence confirmed their presence. These ghost moons are colossal, almost nine times wider than Earth, and are comprised of tiny particles, each estimated to be just a micrometer in size. Sunlight reflecting off these particles causes them to emit a faint glow, but they are exceedingly challenging to observe. While ghost moons captivate our curiosity, they are incredibly delicate and hardly qualify as true moons, despite their orbit around Earth. In addition to ghost moons, there are various other space rocks that seem to orbit Earth but are primarily influenced by the gravitational forces of the Sun. These are termed quasi-satellites or quasi-moons. They do not follow Earth's exact orbit but take approximately 365 days to orbit the Sun, mirroring our planet's journey. This orbital pattern can make them appear as if they are in orbit around Earth, although they are mostly beyond Earth's gravitational sphere of influence. Earth's Trojans, on the other hand, don't precisely orbit our planet, but rather travel along the same path, just ahead or behind it in regions known as Lagrange points. These points are locations in our solar system where the combined gravitational forces of two celestial bodies, along with their orbital motions, create a state of equilibrium. Objects placed in these locations tend to remain there naturally or with minimal energy input, making them gravitationally stable. NASA has effectively utilized Lagrange points, notably with the James Webb Space Telescope, which orbits the Sun at Earth's second Lagrange point. This positioning allows the telescope to maintain its alignment with Earth as it orbits the Sun while conserving a significant amount of fuel. Up to this point, only two Earth Trojans have been discovered, both located in the fourth Lagrange point. While these objects are relatively small, with one measuring about 400 meters across and the other approximately one kilometer in size, they hold promise for the future. These Trojan objects could serve as ideal locations for establishing bases for advanced solar system exploration or potentially serve as valuable resources. They might also be attractive targets for swift, cost-effective robotic space missions, making them logical candidates for early experiments in asteroid mining. Such missions could be conducted more expeditiously compared to journeys to the distant asteroid belt. Throughout history, astronomers have entertained the idea that Earth might possess more than one moon. While we now understand that the moon is our sole permanent natural satellite, we are aware of the existence of various mini-moons that occasionally visit our orbital neighborhood. These mini-moons may one day bear the footprints of astronauts on their surfaces, expanding our cosmic exploration.